soon as it hits four o'clock, Rob, you can start. I think we'll, uh, we'll run it in, don't we? We won't make Joe sit there because he's not going to like it <laughs> yeah. if we do. Um, listen, Joe, lovely to see you. Congratulations, first and foremost. Um, you don't seek the limelight. I know how you dislike sitting where you are now, talking to the likes of me and the media, so thanks for doing it. But it must be a very special feeling to be back there, especially after all you've been through with the injuries. Um, does it feel quite surreal as well, after four years away? Yeah. Um, like you say, it's, it's part and parcel. I'd probably try and swerve it if I could, but um, it is surreal, I think, just because four years is quite a long time and probably spent a fair bit of, of that time thinking about wanting to be back in the mix and see seeing the team do so well and having a taste of it when I was quite a bit younger was obviously special. And, yeah, I, I, I'd be lying if I didn't say I spent time thinking about wanting to be back with the boys and, and getting back to this level. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it has played a big part in my in my mind and, and, and just giving me a new appreciation to be here and, and a different perspective because I know the flip side and, and, and how tough that can be. So it's obviously a privilege, it's a cliche to say, but it is a privilege to be here and having that approach of of gratitude, but also the wanting to do well and wanting to, to prove to myself and and that, that I can be here and participate and, and play my part. I think um, the last time you played for England, your your son had just been born. Was that about right? Twenty twenty. Yeah, yeah. Is he nearly four now? Yeah, so that, yeah, it's it is nice in that sense, just because he's starting to get it a bit and he understands football and yeah, it was it was it was a shame like I, it happened when it did and he was young, he didn't understand it, but now it's really special. I think those are the things that away from the pitch mean the most and yeah, just seeing him come down or come to Wembley and understand it and yeah that's that's the bit that means the most probably look you've had an extraordinary season with Liverpool so far that's what's got you here that's what's earned you this call up again and, and after all those nightmarish injuries that you've had do you think you're in the best form of your career right now um I mean I'm really enjoying my football um obviously we had a good phase um at club when we won the league and so on and so forth but obviously this year has been different for me playing in, in different places and it's hard for me to judge I, I think I was obviously younger and, and and enjoying it then playing centre half mostly but I'm definitely enjoying it I think it helps when the team's doing well and, and when we're winning games and that plays a big part but yeah personally I, I don't know I, I'm just appreciating the moment I'm not really Worrying about where I've been or or where I've got to go, I think just just being here now and and, and embracing it is the main thing. Hi, John. You said it's been four years and you've been thinking about getting back into the squad. Last time you were with England, you got the injury on the training pitch. Was it a strange feeling going back mm. out there, considering the last time you were you you got injured? Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd be lying if I said it didn't have a psychological toll like I left in the ambulance like quite abruptly from the training pitch so yeah it meant a lot to me just even yesterday just doing the warm up and it's nice to sort of feel like I could close that chapter um, not to be over dramatic but it's, it, I mean, everyone gets injured it's part of the game but it being so sudden the way it happened and then just leaving and never really getting the chance to come back was 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 tough to deal with so yeah, it's, it's meant a lot just to be in the mix and to be with the boys and then just yeah, sort of close that chapter for me personally. Do you feel like you can enjoy it more now? And what has Gareth Southgate said to you since, you since you've got back here? Yeah, I think obviously at that time I was probably, I don't know, 22 maybe or so. And being away for so long, you naturally everyone gets older and, and you sort of get a different outlook, a different perspective and that. I'm appreciative of that side of the journey and I can use that to sort of understand that there's there's a lot going on and obviously it's a massive privilege and, and it comes with its pressures playing for England but also understanding that it's, you've got to be grateful to be here and you don't have to be here. It's, 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 um, it's a big privilege as I say. So yeah, Gareth's been, been good with me obviously. Um, I was with Gareth all the way through 21s and then he picked me for my debut. So, 
that's that's that was nice to sort of reunite with him and 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 just be back doing what I'm meant to be doing and 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 yeah, Gareth's great and in that sense, like on an individual basis, keeping in touch and speaking to the players. And you're here in the in the camp before the squad's named ahead of the Euros. The squad goes from 26 to 23, and at Liverpool you're playing in so many different positions. Do you think being so versatile gives you a, a better chance of making that squad? Uh, maybe. I'd, honestly, like I'm just um, taking in this squad, this camp. Obviously, it's, it'd probably be a bit premature for me to think ahead. Um, to that point, but yeah, I'm, I'm just enjoying my football. I'm, I'm enjoying playing different positions, and obviously, first and foremost, I'd, I'd see myself as a centre half. But then, I think with age and with time, you just sort of take it in your stride, and I've enjoyed that. Um, obviously, sort of embracing the opportunities that I've got, considering my past is the main thing. And um, yeah, what will be will be. I think just being here now and trying to get back in the mix with the boys and, and just enjoying the environment. It's, it's, it's a great place to be. Um, obviously, Gareth and all the coaching staff have made such a good environment. It's just nice to be back in it. Very great to have you back. Um, you. Can you tell us the contrast in that squad in the last four years? You would have been hearing from your teammates about how it's changed, but coming into training today, what changes have you seen and what's it like to have so many people say that you are a great such great selection for a 23-man squad? Yeah, I mean, obviously, personnel's changed a lot. Um, but I think the nice thing is the coaching staff and a lot of the staff have have stayed the, the whole duration. And we're lucky in that sense to have such stability with Gareth and his coaching team. Um, but yeah, it has changed a little bit naturally. So I think it's a great squad with great players. I think the youth in the squad is... Obviously, uh, it's, it's in a good place, but then playing at such a high level, it speaks for itself. So, yeah, I, I, it's just nice to be in the mix with the boys and, and, and meeting some of them for the first time. Um, but then also people like Harry and Hendo that were here when I made my debut. And it's a nice balance and, and, and nice to be amongst, amongst the boys. I know Virgil van Dijk's had a big influence on you. He's uh, recently said, you thought I was done. I'm not done yet. He's rained back on those comments, but um, what an inspiration of a, a comeback story. How much has he influenced you, and then how nice was it to keep Ollie Watkins shut out with your aerial jewels, which he's struggled to do in the past? <laughs> yeah, no, Verge, I think Verge's ability and, and his achievements speak for themselves. Um, I'm obviously very close with him. Um, we sort of went through similar phases with injuries at the same sort of time, and that we can relate in that sense and yeah I mean <laughs> Verge can say those sort of things I think he's who he is and I wouldn't come from that angle personally but he's um, he's a great guy I think he's transitioned so well doing what he's doing and but yeah it's, it's, it's nice to be here and, and amongst the boys that are here and we know we've got big games coming up so it's going to be a, a tough test. You've really grown in confidence over all those roles. Where's where's that confidence come from? Um, I think naturally like, eh, players want to play, and, and there's nothing like getting consistency in play. And um, obviously, the environment helps, and, and, and a manager that gives you the license to to just be the best you can. Um, I'm thankful for that, and. Yeah, just I think getting rhythm, getting consistency, and 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 then you can sort of let the anxieties when you it's a bit more staggered when you're not playing as often sort of fall by the wayside. And I think that's been the biggest thing, just getting rhythm and and enjoying that that flow. How you doing, Joe? Uh, Nesta McGregor from BBC Sport. I introduced myself because it's my first time, and I'm a fellow Catford boy as well, so oh, yeah, nice good to see you. another. <laughs> um, I just wanted to know, uh, you mentioned always being optimistic about getting back into the fold, but I wonder with each squad selection that was named, did you sit by the phone? <laughs> and when the phone didn't ring, might it have been another time the squad was going to be announced and just wrote it off and planned something anyway? And did you have to cancel anything this time around? Yeah, I did. <laughs> I, mean, I was... Um, had to buy a book, so I was probably off there. But, yeah, I mean, naturally there was probably occasions where I felt like 
maybe I had more of a chance than others. Um, obviously, early on, I was just focused on getting back to a good place. I think it was tough to come back from, and, and I wasn't expecting to be back in the mix as soon as I was fit. Um, obviously, it was tough at times when, in the past, pre-injuries, like when I've never been to a major tournament and then missing out on those. But I, I've always been at peace with with the, the outcome. I've never been um, fixated on how I've not gone, so I'm not I'm guided. I, I had to be, I think, just focusing on the process and where I was with club and, and doing that fundamentally is the main contributing factor to getting back in, in the fold. So... Uh, I think every, everything, I'm believing everything happened for a reason at the right time. So I'm, I'm happy to be here now. And, and yeah, it was obviously a lot of tough times and, and periods to sort of get back. But it's, it's nice to sort of hope that that's, that's compounded the, the hard work over time to get back to this point. Mm -hmm. well, I hope you got a refund in your Dubai fair <laughs> and hotel. Um, it's worth saying, you know, we keep harking on about four years, but... Um, you might seem like a new player. Someone who else is new is Kobe Mainu. I wonder if there's an England initiation. Uh, have you had to do one because it's been so long and what <laughs> might he have to do? Um, I don't think so. I think it's probably daunting enough to come back in. and um, Yeah, I think everyone, the group, the senior lads, the manager and the staff, try and make the, the boys feel as comfortable as possible. And Yeah, I think he's, he's enough to focus on. I know how it feels like your first camp and... Similarly, me being in that similar sort of position, having been away for so long, that's probably a bit of an ask to, to have to stand on the chair and sing or something. But, um, yeah, I mean, that's one of the beauties of, of having Gareth and, and the staff, how comfortable they make the boys feel. And essentially, everyone just wants to focus on their football and, and do the best they can for the country. Mm. And with your son being four, I imagine a summer holiday might have been planned for June, July. I'm guessing that's not going to be the case. You want to be on that plane and... Uh, what what would it mean like to come full circle? Yeah, I mean, I don't want to think too far in advance. I'm I'm, I'm focusing on this week. So we we've got two good games against top opposition, and being back on the pitch would would be would be nice. And yeah, I'm I'm not thinking ahead that far. Obviously, we've got a lot to play for in in, in the rest of the season as well on the club side. So yeah, what will be will be. Um, just taking it each day as it comes, sort of thing. Okay, anyone else in the live section? James on. Hi, Joe. Um, after Liverpool drew against City, your manager, Jurgen Klopp, went on TV and said, you know, Joe Gomez, Gareth, honestly. <laughs> just wondered what you made of that when you saw it. Um, yeah, obviously you didn't see it live. I've got <laughs> yeah, I mean, <clears throat> the gap of that club is the gap, I think. He's one of a kind, and I obviously owe a lot to him. That he's been probably the biggest influence on my career, or well, definitely. And yeah, he's, it's it's nice to have that support from your manager. And I definitely didn't ask him to do it. So, um, but yeah, he, he, he's he's obviously been a massive influence on me, not just as a player but as a person. So that was obviously nice of him, I guess. Um, it feels like he's really championed you sort of consistently he always seems to quite often single you out and sort of taught you up and it must be great for your confidence yeah I, mean, I think <clears throat> similarly to here I think it, it, it's nice to have a manager that you collectively all want to play for and, and give you all for and that's the case there and I guess instances like that play a factor and, and um, yeah it's it's it's, it's obviously special to to play under under him, but the main thing was doing what I can to get back here and and, and yeah, I saw that. There's obviously a lot of focus on on Klopp leaving and the talk about wanting to go out on a high. But would the sort of perfect end to the season for you be to to win something more at Liverpool and then to go away with England at the Euros? Yeah, that's the aim. I think. No matter the period, obviously, the manager announcing that he's leaving plays a part in things and, and, and the whole view towards the rest of the season. But it was always the same. That the application won't have changed. Um, if you want to win every game, every footballer does, I guess. And that won't have changed from when he signed his first his renewal to when he said he was leaving, I think. 
we all obviously appreciate it massively, but um, yeah, nothing's changed. Everyone just wants to do well, and you can only do that by taking one at a time. I think we can't look beyond. It's obviously highly competitive, and it's not going to be easy, but yeah, all we can do is focus on, on what's ahead. Toll. Mm. Can you just tell us specifically how you sustain the injury and just your emotions before you was it the same pitch that you returned to on yesterday yeah 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 it was the same pitch um we we're just doing an 11 v 11 sort of thing and then yesterday you mean uh, no the yeah the pre in the gone. injury yeah um it's quite a, a unique not unique but it's not that common it was like a patella tendon rupture and i was by myself i just went to play a pass i sort of planted my foot and then yeah, it ruptured. It was quite gruesome. My kneecap was <laughs> halfway up my knee and then up, up my leg. And yeah, a lot of it's a blur because obviously it was a bit painful. But um, yeah, from that point, it was obviously a massive part of my life, probably the hardest point in my career. Um, just that moment because of how it happened. And then, yeah, the last time I saw Gareth, I was on the bed in the, waiting for the ambulance. So. Yeah, it was tough, um, and it it is a big part of my of my journey that I wouldn't shy away from. Obviously, I've moved past it, and a big part of of my application and my motivation comes from working in that in that period to get back. And I, I don't ever want to lose that because it's it shaped me into who I am. And yeah, I just think losing sight of of where I've come from is is important. I don't do I don't lose that. So. It's definitely changed my application towards everything, recovery, gym work and so on, and just keeping it up I think is important, but I'm I'm at peace with what happened and, and definitely moved past this that long ago now. It's, it's not... A What's your sense of emotions going back into that same pitch yesterday? Yeah, it was... <laughs> it was... Um, obviously, from the outside looking in, no one would, would realise, but it was a bit surreal. Um, I've sort of prepared myself mentally, obviously, to, but I think that obviously naturally was probably a bit of an underlying trauma that I could sort of draw a line under um, coming back. And yeah, that's, that was, it meant a lot in that sense, for sure. Joe, you had, you had a few games behind closed doors for England, uh, mm. your, your last three games. So your last game in front of fans was, a, was the, the game where when you came on, uh, yeah, there, there were some, some boos in the stadium. I mean, h how did that feel and how did you deal with that and process that? Yeah, it was, yeah, it was obviously testing. Like, it was, it was, um, you never want that to happen in front of your home crowd, but it was, it was obviously a scenario that moved long past now and, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting back in front of the fans and, and playing. I think Wembley's such a special stadium that, playing in the cup finals and so on, being there every time is special. So I understood that. I didn't delve too deep into it or, or let it consume me too much. I understood um, it wasn't great. Obviously, I'd be lying, but it is what it is part of football. Jack, can I ask you a question about sort of the messaging from Gareth and the, and the staff around this camp mm. in comparison to sort of when you were last... In, uh, in 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 the group because four years ago you were the team building towards something yeah and now you're heading into this summer you it, there's a feeling that you're on the cusp of and on the brink of actually achieving uh yeah. winning a trophy yeah uh, have you found a sense that that kind of messaging and and the, the sense around the squad has, has shifted and changed yeah definitely i think <coughs> rightly so the success that the team's had I think um, the manager mentioned the world rankings that England were 13th or 14th at that point um, when we last played Brazil. So I think the team and the manager have done unbelievably well and are now sitting where they are. And, and I think going into the Euros should definitely, like, it's, it's definitely creates a confidence. Um, I think the identity of the team and the philosophy behind the way that Gareth wants to play is clear. and. Yeah, I think going off the back of the successes in the World Cup and, and the Euros, I think it's a given that the team understands that probably our favourites in some senses to do well. And 
but there's also that underlying confidence that it can be backed up. And uh, but it's obviously a long way to go, and and it's gonna be a process to get through the group and so on. But there's definitely the past to 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 look back on and see the results in in the Euros and the World Cup and say like it, it's achievable. Is, is this last of all for me, is, is there a feeling from your point of view that because of that there can be no kind of bedding back in period for you. you've got to hit the ground, kick the ground running if you're going to have any chance of sort of making the squad uh, in the summer? Yeah, I think that's always the case. I think, <coughs> you know, you have to try and put your best foot forward in this environment and, um, yeah, it, it, as I said, it's always a case in, in, in my view of just one game at a time and and hoping that that, that all comes together to get in the mix, but yeah, you always want to do your best when you're wearing this shirt, and and that that will never change. Just last one before I get onto the Jordan mic. Just uh, on the recovery from from injury, how mentally testing was that for you? Was it almost a surprise to you how mentally testing that mm. could be? And also, were there were there anybody in particular that that you really lent on during that time? Yeah, it was it was. I think more so psychologically because I was by myself, the nature of the injury and trusting my body again because obviously I need to do do that sort of movement again. And there was a lot of people. It's hard. I think first and foremost my wife, um, like just supporting me like unconditionally, and obviously my boys. Oh, at the time my my eldest son, people at the club, obviously um, the physios and just helping shape my whole outlook. I had to sort of change my processes and, and, and understand all the finer details. And yeah, the surgeon, the, the, there's countless people that I'd probably do a disservice to if I t didn't name them. And I think it was definitely the, the hardest point, not just as a footballer, but as an individual, just sort of worrying, having that uncertainty about the future and sort of falling away a bit and, and, and understanding that I've got a long way to go, worrying if I'd be able to get back to a level. So, But I'm grateful for it all just because, like I say, it's, it's helped shape me and I can always lean on it to keep perspective and a wider view of things. No matter the scenario, I think I can always look back to those moments and and, and see the positives. Thanks, everyone. See you next. Cheers. Thank you, guys. Thank you.